Well, we know that President Obama wants background checks for all gun owners. And as we mentioned earlier in the program, the government now wants background checks before you get a job. But there's one background they don't want to check, and that's President Obama's. And we have with us today a lead investigator into President Obama's background. We have Mike Zullo. He is a lead investigator for Sheriff Arpaio's cold case posse. And they have some new developments in looking at President Obama's birth certificate. Mike, welcome. Hey, thank you for having me today. Now, you've got a lot of experience as an investigator in New Jersey. Tell us a little bit about your background before we get into uh, looking at uh, Obama's background, his documents. I'm a former New Jersey police officer, police detective. I'm a New Jersey police certified investigator. I've been uh, trained in fingerprint identification, narcotics investigation, domestic violence investigation. I was trained in um, surveillance techniques and counter surveillance technique techniques. I've been MCSO, Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, trained in investigation and interview techniques, high risk criminal detection detection and felony apprehension. I have received AZ Post certified training in both homicide investigation and cold case homicide investigation. And I am currently the commander of the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office cold case posse under the direction of Sheriff Joe Arpaio. I am his chief investigation uh, investigational officer on the eligibility investigation of Barack Obama's long form birth certificate. Now, you went to Hawaii as part of this investigation, is that correct? And looked at, uh, tried to get some original documents. Tell us a little bit about that. Actually went there twice. Um, we did go there the very first time to interview Mr. Alvin Onaka. He's the state registrar from the state of Hawaii. On the bottom of that PDF image, Mr. Onaka's signature appears with a certification stamp certifying the authenticity of that PDF image. Um, much to our surprise, Mr. Onaka refuted refused to interview with us. Uh, he actually said that he doesn't take an interview with the public. Uh, subsequent to that, we persisted and instructed uh, his staff that we were the police, not just the general public, and that we needed to speak to someone. They sent forth a deputy attorney general by the name of Jill Nagamini. After a little coercing, we did get about a 20-minute interview with her, and uh, she painfully took us through the process of why everything we were asking could not be produced because, according to her, we would be violating Hawaii state law in asking for a verification of a document. Hmm. The one thing that became apparent to us in the questions that were asked was, in no way did the state of Hawaii re release a PDF file, in no way did they certify a PDF file. As a matter of fact, they made it very clear that they really had nothing to do with that. Once they issued a long-form birth certificate, anyone who got that certificate was free to do whatever they wanted to do with it. Well, that's interesting because I have background with Photoshop, and you, you referred to it as a, as a PDF file. I mean, you would expect that if this didn't come from Hawaii or some official office, well, even if it did, you would expect it to be a flattened document. But this document had layers, this document that was provided by, I guess it was the White House that provided this? My understanding is it was provided uh, by the White House. It was on the WhiteHouse.gov server produced for the world to see the state of Arizona and every state in the nation and proffered as proof positive of the birth event. Mm -hmm. The only problem we have with that is that PDF image, because of that layering, we do believe is not an original image, not a certified image. It has been built entirely by human intervention. It was compiled for one purpose and one purpose only, and that was to deceive the unsuspecting public. Yeah, you know, I, I remember when George Bush was running, I believe it was uh, for re-election, and Dan Rather had this document that purported to be from uh, a letter from the Bush family or something to a National Guard person, but it was obviously a forgery because this letter was supposedly written back in the 60s, but it had proportionally spaced typing. It had... Uh, you know, you, they put in a date that's like the 15th or something, and it put, put like the little upper superscript TH there, which you would never get off of a typewriter at that time. So it was clearly a modern-looking document. And there was a lot of issues that were anachronisms. There was differences in the typeface on this as well, right, as well as uh, some content issues. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we have the typeset issues, although we don't believe the typeset issues are from an original document. And here's where they are purposely confusing the public. This is not an original document. What we have mm -hmm. here is an original forgery. <laughs> this never started its life as a paper document. So we do have typeset anomalies on here that we believe were 
um, perpetrated by a cut and paste method of moving around individual letters. We have evidence that the state register stamp numerous date stamps have been imported into the document from different source documents and you get those nine layers that you were referring to you have specific information contained on each and every one of those layers including the layer nine which is the green safety paper background and aside from all the other anomalies and everything else imported into that document the only reason why you would manufacture a green safety paper background is for one specific intent to deceive the unsuspecting public's untrained eye that this thing looks authentic there is just no way that a computer automated process could create the number of anomalies found in obama's pdf file absolutely yeah it looks like a very poorly done forgery Tell us a little bit about this affidavit uh, that's just recently come out. It did recently come out, is that correct? Is that the affidavit that I submitted or our experts? Yes. The affidavit I submitted was to the Supreme Court in uh, Alabama. I was requested by Attorney Larry Clayman if I would help him out and submit an affidavit. Apparently, in that uh, court situation, the Democratic uh, Alabama Democratic Party submitted an amicus brief and Mr. Clayman was looking for a rebuttal document and asked me to provide it. That document is a pretty good overview of where we stand on the Obama document. That document actually reads as almost like an indictment, if you will, of the document. Um, as a matter of fact, I could have, you know, at one point I'll send you a copy of it. You could post it on your site if you like it. It's good sure. for people to read that. Yeah, no, I absolutely would. Tell us about the other affidavit, too, that was by the uh, expert. We were fortunate, uh, if not blessed, in a sense. Um, we tried, we had a gentleman try about 212 forensic document examiners, trying to get someone that would take a look at this document for us, verify our work, our findings, and come to his own independent conclusion. We were fortunate in uh, finally securing a gentleman by the name of Reed Hayes, a certified document, forensic document examiner, who did just that. Uh, a little reluctantly in the beginning, he did take a look at the document for me. When I convinced him to t at least take a look, a cursory look at the file, I sent him the original PDF file that was pulled down off the White House website. And in about, uh, I got to say, about 20 minutes, he did contact me back and did tell me there was something wrong with it. There were many things wrong with it. I then asked him if he would indeed look at it and help us, and he said he would. About two weeks later, I got a 40-page report back from Mr. Hayes, and in his conclusion, he comes right forth and says that in all his years, 20 years of experience looking at all kinds of documents, he has never seen a document so fatally flawed as this, and that the document, in his opinion, is a 100% fabrication. Now, this is a court-recognized forensic document examiner has testified in numerous court cases and its fate would have it he even testified on behalf of perkins coy perkins coy is the law firm that represents mr obama in all eligibility issues mm -hmm. and it's actually the same law firm that dispatched a lawyer to pick up the purported two certified copies of mr obama's birth certificate wow now there were some computer simulations as a part of that affidavit weren't there Yes, there were. There, there's some... Uh, some Tell us a little bit about that. Well, there were screenshots in that affidavit of some of the work that we did. Um, now, if you're talking about the affidavit, are you talking about his report? Well, his report. Where were you, just tell us a little bit about the computer simulations. Well, I can't, I can't go into too much about his report. His report is okay. confidential. I I've see. only released that last comment that he made because that really sums it up. Okay. All right. Fine. Now, there were some things that really were, were things, like I said, that uh, people could see even if they weren't document experts. The multiple layers was very suspicious. There were other things, too, like the fact that it referred to his race as African-American. That was very anachronistic, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Uh, our research says that the term African, number one, is not a race identifier. Uh, number two, the term African, dis to describe a race, if you will, was not used for about 20 years in the future. It was actually around the early 80s Right. Um, it was used. So we have no documentation that says African means anything like that. Um, the other problem you have with that is African doesn't describe a white individual. It doesn't describe a black individual. It doesn't describe an Asian individual. 
Mm -hmm. It is not a race identifier. So whoever compiled the document for whatever purpose used African as the race identifier, and that was incorrect by the 1961 vital statistics standards. That term for a person of color back then would have been Negro and should have appeared as Negro in that field, not That's African. Right. And, and people can verify this for themselves if they just Google this. Uh, all you have to do is, is look up the terms and see when African-American began to be used, as you said, it wasn't even talked about really until the late 60s, six or seven years after Obama was born. Up until that point, Negro and colored were used, and uh, there's, you can find articles, a 1967 Ebony article that talks about uh, black versus African-American. You can find a Slate report that talks about the uh, term Negro started its decline in 1966 and was totally uncouth by the mid-1980s. So to put something like that in is, is another one of these acronyms, anachronisms, like I said, like the, uh, the typefaces in the George Bush letter, the superscript TH, things that are modern that they tried to put in a document that would be 40, 50, 60 years old. Well, that's correct. And, you know, this document, yeah, as Mr. Hayes pointed out, is so fatally flawed. You only need one item to put a document into question. That's right. That's right. But the biggest problem with this document is you could never take this PDF file, enter it into a courtroom, put it before a judge, and have a judge declare it authentic. It's mm -hmm. impossible to do. Hawaii statutes do not provide for them to create a PDF file. It's <laughs> just something that didn't come out of the state of Hawaii. That turns this into a felony. The production of this document is a felony. The possession of the document is a felony. Proffering it to people for gain is a felony. And gain being the presidential race for, you know, 2012, I believe this was you know, released a, a little bit before. And there's a gain of $450,000 a year to be the president of the United States. So there's a financial aspect, you know, uh, compiled with this. So the document we know is not real. You cannot use that document to get a Social Security card. You couldn't use it to get a utility bill. You couldn't bring it into a courtroom. Effectively, the American people have been shown nothing relating to that birth event. And the bigger problem we have is we have no verifiable information of Mr. Obama being in the state of Hawaii before the age of five years old. Mm -hmm. you cannot locate anyone to come forward and say they knew Stanley Ann Dunham is pregnant, They've seen her pregnant. They took her to a hospital. Nothing. We have little instances of people saying afterwards they saw the child, but nothing before five years old. Well, you know, it's, it's not limited just to this. I mean, we, we see so many things coming from the Obama administration. We see the Benghazi issues. We see the IRS issues. We see so many cases where you've got officials of the Obama administration caught lying under oath. And yet, uh, you know, we, we can't look at, they're, they're grabbing everyone's phone records at Homeland Security, and yet he's got all of his personal records sealed, his travel records, his early records, his uh, college records, everything is sealed for this president. There's absolutely no transparency for him personally and no transparency for the administration. So given the fact that we've got Fast and Furious and we've got the IRS scandals, we've got uh, wiretapping scandals that are magnitudes far greater than we saw with Richard Nixon when he was impeached. A lot of the same issues that Richard Nixon had. We've got illegal wars, undeclared wars. We've got beyond that. We've got assassination drone lists that he's doing. What is the chance of any of this stuff coming together? And, and how, does, how does your investigation wrap up and play into this? Do you think you have a better chance of, of exposing his criminal actions in the birth certificate forgery than we have in some of these other scandals? Well, I think these other scandals, obviously, in severity, outweigh the production of a document. However, if Congress had done their job um, as early as the complaints were coming in, and by the way, Alex Jones was the first video I ever saw in this document when I was assigned this case. I did a little, you know, cruising around the Internet and saw Alex taking it apart. Mm -hmm. um, if that was paid mind to then, maybe these other instances of outrageous violations Absolutely. against American people would never have happened. Absolutely. Now, we are trying, Sheriff Ohio has maintained that this really needs to get the attention of Congress. I agree with him wholeheartedly, and we are proceeding in that venue. We do have indication that Congressman Steve Stockman 
from Texas is very interested and we are trying to coordinate a meeting where I could fully debrief Mr. Stockman as to what has been going on here. Great, great. It, you know, if we go back and we look at the Nixon impeachment, it wasn't a single thing. It was an overreaching pattern of behavior. And that's what we see with the Obama administration, too. You know, we, we see not only the wiretapping and the FBI coming after people, illegal wars, the IRS used as a weapon against political enemies. We also see the same types of things in terms of lying and changing documents that we saw under the Nixon administration. So I guess from your perspective then, if we can wrap all these together into uh, multiple sections that, that might have some weight, we, you think that maybe Steve Stockman, maybe some other congressman might be able to uh, have the guts to stand up and do that? I'm hoping so. I think Steve Stockman has what it takes and I'm hoping there's gonna be others to support him. You know, going forward with this, this is something that has to be dealt with. Or the American people have a right to know who their president is. That's right. We have a background check or an investigation going on that we can't tell you who the man is. I mean, it's the only sitting president I know of that has four aliases, mm -hmm. you know, four AKAs. Goes by different names. I can't put him in certain places that he claims to be in his background. He could not pass a background investigation to become a deputy sheriff. He couldn't pass it for our government to be really candid with you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and we learned that the government does not vet a presidential candidate, nor do they vet a president-elect or the sitting president. Well, it's a, it's a pattern of behavior that we see over and over again. We're, we're, our lives are to be open books to the government, and yet you have a situation like the Bilderberg conventions that they have, meetings that they have, and we're not allowed to know what's being told there. We're not even allowed to know for sure who's there. No notes are taken. No public is allowed anywhere near the place. So we have the people at the very top of the system that maintain that they are to have absolute privacy and secrecy, and we better not look into what they're doing, and yet they expect to have an insight into every aspect of our life. No detail is to be left hidden to them. Well, you know, it's really good when you put those kind of laws and regulations in place when you're the one administering them and not on the receiving end of them. That's right. And, you know, Alex has been talking about this. And, you know, and I have to tell you, I didn't know Alex Jones until this started. And in the very beginning, I would hear some of the things he would say. And he was always saying something. He goes, don't believe me. Do your own research. Mm -hmm. Well, I actually took Alex up on a number of those things. And to my amazement, the information that he was talking about, I actually could find. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, he's doing a service, and my hat is off to him. I know he takes a lot of shots, and you know, I just hope he's real careful. You need to be really careful in this game. Well, as you know, when you come up with something that the mainstream media is not covering, and nobody is talking about it, the first reaction is going to be, are you crazy? I don't hear this from anybody else. So just as you're having to carefully document your investigation with all the details and get expert testimony, you have to very carefully document this because you're one of the few people covering it. And we have to do that all the time. If we come out with some news that nobody else is covering, we have to link to the documents. And so, as you said, hopefully people will take a look at this. I'd like for you to send us that document that you referenced earlier, and we'll put that up uh, along with this interview on uh, the website, and people can look at that and investigate it for themselves. But as we said before, certain things like the fact that it's a layered document, the fact that they use a term that would not be used at the time to describe his race, those things are easily verified by people who just do their own Google search. I just typed in uh, when African American became a popular term to be used, and I found multiple, multiple documents that would support that from a lot of different sources. So people can do their own investigation on some of these things, and as you pointed out, you don't need to catch but just one mistake like that that's fraudulent in a document to prove that it's false, but you've got a lot of different areas there so it, it is riddled with issues well thank you very much thank you yes thank you very much for talking to us and certainly hope that you can get some traction on this that you can get a congressman to stand up and actually file articles of impeachment because this is a serious issue it's a serious issue when his administration lies before congress about what they're doing but but this is also yet another case that uh, should be looked at thank you very much mike thank you sir thank you bye-bye well, if you want to stay current on investigations about this and the seemingly endless list of scandals coming out of the Obama administration and criminal activity, get a subscription to Prison Planet TV if you're watching this on YouTube. Just one subscription gives 10 people besides yourself access to 
Prison Planet TV simultaneously. It helps to support our operation, and it helps to wake people up and keep them informed. Well, that's it for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show.